Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Simple Gardening. Today we will discuss on integrated pest management. It's called as IPM. IPM is a very popular subject in farming. Today we will discuss about IPM briefly. Let us see why IPM is important. Today there is an increase in global population whereas a decrease in food production because of insects, weeds, diseases. The losses which are being created by this can be solved by proper IPM. Let us see what are the different methods of IPM. There are four types, cultural, physical, biological and chemical methods. When we follow the above three instead of chemical, the above three methods then we will be very successful in our gardening or whatever the vegetable production the first ipm tool is cultural methods using resistant varieties help to deter pest and diseases the next one is following crop rotation crop rotation is an important factor in preventing diseases and pests Always remember we need to rotate our crop every season. We should not grow the same family veggies in the same bed or on the land. For example, this season you have grown tomato and the next season you can't grow brinjal or eggplant because both are both belong to the same family. Because of this, the, there will be an impact of disease, pest and yield loss. The next factor is removal of crop residues. The old crop residues should be removed or else they have to be incorporated into the soil which acts as a very good organic matter once it is decomposed. If we don't do it, there will be a problem of old pest. The next one is timely sowing or planting. When we sow or plant a particular variety in different time, there will be a pressure of pest and diseases. The next important method is spacing. We have to go as per the recommended spacing for whatever vegetables we want to grow. Because a perfect spacing will minimize the competition between the plants as well as the spread of diseases will be under control as well as migration of pests from one plant to another plant will be very much controlled. At the most, there will be best movement of air between the plants and this helps in reducing the diseases as well as increasing the yields. The next one is uh, ju judicious use of fertilizers. When you go for organic fertilizers, then it is the safest way. But if you opt for chemical fertilizers, always remember, go as per the recommended. If we use more quantities, it spoils the soil characters as well as if there are more ni uh, like nitrogenous fertilizers in the soil, it will attract the pests and diseases. So always remember, we are not feeding the plant, we are feeding the soil. Next. Next, we'll see about the field or bed sanitation. Sanitation of bed is nothing but it has to be free from weeds. It has to be free from any sort of old stubble. We need to clean it very properly. The next one is border crop. Border crop is nothing but for the main crop, another crop will be around it, which will prevent pest migration and disease infestation. The next tool is mechanical methods. The first one is hand picking. Whenever you see any pest, the best method is to hand pick it and kill it. This is the safest way to control pests. And if you see any infested plant part like leaf or stem, just remove it off and discard it. The second method is yellow sticky traps. It has This sticky traps has glue and it controls in sucking pest. And it is very safest method. White flies, aphids are, control, are, are being uh, attracted by these yellow sticky traps. And the next very most important uh, trap are the pheromone traps yes pheromone traps are the most efficient you know different types of pheromones are used to control different type of pests like spodoptera fruit sucking moth helicoverpa fruit flies as you can see here these are the spodopteran adults which are being trapped in a single pheromone trap in my uh, garden so this is the most effective way only always remember only adult moths will be controlled by pheromone traps and the lure which is present in the pheromone traps need to be replaced once in 25 to 30 days then the effectiveness of the pheromone traps will be to the utmost level and the next one are the bird perches but basically everybody knows birds are the most natural predators and in our garden any T-shaped stick should be placed so that the birds can be resting on that stick and they can just feed upon the pest whichever it finds 
and this is the best way to control the pest and the next method is solarization of beds during the summers during the hot periods this has to be done a plastic cover has to be covered it kills the pupae and harmful bacteria in the soil and the next method is trap crop basically marigolds mustard okra castor are used as trap crops to kill the pest the third important tool of ipm are the biological methods as i had discussed in my previous videos about beneficial insects 80% of pest is being controlled by beneficial insects the chemical insecticides or pesticides controls only the 20% of the pest the remaining is done by beneficial insects while spraying chemical pesticides these beneficial insects are also being killed so just go organic if you go for organic the nature will be safe and there will be no harm to the natural predators so what are the basic natural products the first one is neem oil neem oil is a very effective pesticide as well as a fungicide it acts as ovicidal it smothers the pest and the second uh, biocide is bacillus thuringiensis it controls all different types of caterpillars and it is very effective on first second and third instars the next one is npv nuclear polyhedrosis virus this controls podoptera and helicoverpa these are the most safest biochemicals let's see the last ipm tool chemical methods as i had discussed before there are four categories of pesticides based upon the toxicity level we should always remember we if we need to use a chemical pesticide then go for green colored toxicity level pesticides because they are safer on humans as well as honeybees so called natural predators but don't opt for red yellow or blue they are very dangerous always opt for green bright green colored toxicity labeled pesticides because they are safe and they do not cause any harm to the environment also flu bendamide it's very it's very safe for human beings and it controls all type of caterpillars the next chemical is a uh, spinosad it controls sucking pest as well as biting and chewing type of pest also basically these two type of pesticides are safe we can use it and always remember whenever we go for a chemical spray always use personal protection equipment like goggles nose mask rubber gloves apron this sort of things because whenever the pesticide falls upon us the residues will be entering into the body and it will give a long term harmful side effects on us so always remember be safe and protect yourself and once you have completed using your chemical pesticides please dispose the empty containers safely as per your local regular laws because we can't throw it everywhere and it, it will harmfully affect the environment so please be careful but always remember go organic be organic and try to grow your vegetables in an organic way it helps you have a healthy lifestyle so that's it friends for today thanks for watching and please like the video share the video and if you have any comments go ahead and don't forget to subscribe to my to my channel simple gardening thank you have a nice day